In this video, I'd like to go over a tool that we use extensively in fluid mechanics to analyze a fluid flow. And you'll see it used in other fields as well, really to solve any type of engineering problem that deals with a continuum mechanics approach. And it's called the Reynolds Transport Theorem. And the theorem itself was first postulated and, and laid out by Osborne Reynolds in the late 1800s. And it states that the total change of stuff is equal to the change of stuff in the volume in a control volume plus the sum of the fluxes across the control surface okay and this should sound somewhat familiar because we've already employed it in our analysis of conservation of mass however here I'd like to take a more general approach of looking at the Reynolds transport theorem because we're going to use it again and again for conservation of momentum and energy and then there's other things that as well that we can apply it to okay so the Reynolds transport theorem considers some stuff. In this case, I've described it or labeled it lowercase b. And it's some stuff per mass. So it's some stuff per unit mass. And then we say that capital B is the total amount of stuff in our little control volume that we've been dealing with all semester. So, so that means that capital B is an integral over the control volume of rho the density times some stuff b over some integrated over the volume okay so what that means is and the reason it's rho times b is because that converts the stuff per mass to a stuff per volume all right so and what the real transport theorem ultimately says is again the total change of stuff the left hand side of of the equation there that the total derivative the total change in stuff is equal to the time rate of change of stuff in the control volume plus the flux across the control surface where this particular term here the d over dt this is inherently an unsteady term okay and so we get again the total change of stuff is equal to the time rate of change of stuff in the control volume plus the flux across our control surface all right, and I'd like to point out before we move on that also this that second term, the flux across the control surface, is again our velocity, the dot product of our velocity vector and our differential area vector dA with a tilde underneath it. And what that allows us to do is it inherently builds in the directionality, right? So we we've defined the differential area vector as always pointing normal outward of the control volume is positive. And so that allows us to have any directionality built in. So for example, the V on the left hand side of the control volume is going uh, into the control volume here. And so that inherently is going to be a negative because those two vectors here are in opposite direction. So the dot product is going to be negative. So inflow is always going to be negative and we've already talked about that this semester um, conversely on this other side the two vectors we have an outflow velocity vector and those two vectors are oriented in the same direction so we're going to get outflow is always positive okay so we have this arbitrary variable b, and it can be anything. We can put anything, substitute b for anything we want to look at. And so what types of things are conserved and what types of quantities might we be interested in? Well, first one's mass. Uh, we've already used the Reynolds, tra Reynolds transport theorem in this class to look at conservation of mass and control volume. The next thing we're, we'll look at, and it's particularly important in engineering, is momentum because that's where we develop equations for our forces that we're interested in. So that'll be the next video after this one. We'll look at conservation of momentum using the Reynolds transport theorem. Third is angular momentum, and we won't talk about it a whole lot in class, but we will spend a video and a class period working some problems because angular momentum is important when we start thinking about turbines and energy extraction and pumps and things like that. And so, but we can apply the same Reynolds transport theorem to angular momentum as we did to mass and momentum. Fourth is energy, which 
uh, again, is going to be quite obvious, the conservation of energy. And finally, the last thing that is conserved is scalars. And scalars can be anything. It could be pollutants in the water. It could be phytoplankton floating in the water. It could be nutrients in the water that plants are uptaking. So anything that's in the water that's being transported around or in the fluid. So really everything is conserved. We just got to get our total derivative defined correctly in order to deal with some of the other things that might go on and say if it's a biological system. Okay? So the before we end this video, what I want to do is just show you that the Reynolds transport theorem works and if we use this general form, we can still pull out our conservation of mass. So let's take a look at that real quick. So in the conservation of mass, in that situation, we're going to say that B is equal to mass, right? So if we substitute stuff for mass, we're going to get B, so B, is stuff for mass and for stuff we're going to substitute mass in. So now we're going to have mass per mass, right? And that's equal to 1. So B is simply equal to 1, just like we already did, okay? And then the next thing we can say immediately is that dB over dt is equal to zero because the total mass in, the, in any system is going to be constant. So if B is just one, then the Reynolds transport theorem that B equal to one is going to look like d over dt integral over the control volume of rho dv, because b is 1, plus the integral over the control surface of rho v dot dA is equal to 0. And this is Munson, this is equation 5.5 in Munson. And it's simply the straight up definition of conservation of mass. So we easily recover our, what we originally did for conservation of mass using the Reynolds transport theorem by simply saying that stuff is equal to mass. Okay, so in the next video we're going to take the Reynolds transport theorem and look at conservation of momentum.